actually called Judas friend in the garden. He said, friend, why did you come to betray me? Or is this why you came? He, he stayed with it. He practiced what he preached, if you would. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 7, says, Many waters cannot quench love. Rivers, floods cannot wash it away. If one were to give all the wealth of his house for love, it would be utterly scorned. In other words, it is the greatest thing on this earth. I like what David said about uh, uh, your opinions and how we deal with life. If you really love somebody, all of a sudden your opinion doesn't matter that much. Amen. I'm just going to, get, I'm going to love you through this. I'm going to stay with it. I'm going to show it. The word waters there literally means the things that are squeezed or extracted by pressures. Pressures can't change my love. That which washes over me can't change my love. That which tries to take away some, can't, the flood, it can't change it. Things that flow together as a course against you, they're not going to change the love. Would the flow of his disloyal decoy distract him off of his endearment of eternity? Uh-uh. He loved them. Stay focused. He loved them until the end. I'm going to stay with you, man. I'm not going. The flood of betrayal, the waters of festivity, the anguish of the hour, it's not going to stop them. When friendships go sideways, and they do, let me know they do. Friendships go sideways. We have to fight through it. Do what needs to happen to resolve it. But for God's sake, don't let your love for Jesus die. Just say, well, Pastor, you don't understand. That person betrayed me. That person hurt me. That person. But don't let your Jesus die. Don't, don't, let, don't let things. Well, Pastor, but you don't understand. It's family. I don't care who it is. Don't let anybody stop you from loving Jesus. Amen. And if necessary, stop you from loving them. You may act a fool. You may be stupid. You may keep falling back into that addiction. You may leave, can't, can't leave the bottle alone. I don't care what you do. I still love you. I don't like you right now. Let me say, I don't like you right now, but I love you. Do you understand the difference there? There are times in life I am commanded to love one another. I'm commanded to love you. You're commanded to love me. But the Bible don't say, it gives me this one little loophole. And help me in Jesus if, if I'm taking advantage of it. But there are times I just don't like you right now. I love you. But your actions and what you're doing are hurting me, hurting others. And they're, 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 they're conflicting. Amen. <laughs> But I love you. And because I love you, I ain't giving up on you. But I don't like what you're doing. You follow where I'm going here? There are times my kids, I love my kids. I will, I will break the bank for my kids. They know that. I get texts from them this week. Thank you for doing this. And thank you for doing that. But there are times they do stuff I don't like. But that like never took the love out of me. I still love him. I'm going to stay with that love. That's how I feel about this house. Why was he so focused on proving his love? These were his personal disciples. The Bible talked about 70 disciples being with him, but these guys were something personal in his life. He loved his own. He knew God gave them to him. He knew when he was walking along the, the side of the, 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 the bank there uh, of the of Sea of Galilee, those men were his men. He knew when he met Matthew, the tax collector, that was his man. When he met uh, uh, one of those guys, I think it was one of the Judases. There's actually two Judases, a disciple. He, he was a, uh, a man who hated tax collectors. I like when God puts people who don't like each other in the same church. It proves just how powerful he is. Amen. To help them love one another and get along with each other. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. He is careful to love what the Father gave him. In other words, you know God gave it to you. Love it. It's precious. It's a blessing to you. There are times, I'm going to just say this again in love. There are times we look at our kids as something as a... Uh, <laughs> devilish uh, uh, we can't believe that they are us I have shifted my thinking in life God gave me those gifts they are a gift to me amen if there was a problem with them it must have happened back in the day with me I, have, I must have done something but I gotta, I gotta love them I gotta love them through it Kenny I saw your daughter got a blue belt is that right and then your granddaughter got a blue belt they bought blue belts together. Your kids are dangerous. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. May all our kids get blue belts after we give them a black belt. Come on, give me an amen. 
He chose them. He chose us. Luke 6, 13. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples. And of them he chose 12, whom also he named apostles. Psalm 78, 70. He chose David, also his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds. From following the ewes, great with young, he brought him to feed Jacob, his people, and Israel, his inheritance. In other words, you need to look at your life not so much. I know you think you picked him. I know you think you got saved. But let me flip this on you just a little bit. From eternity standpoint he chose you he picked you out he drew you in he set you up for a divine appointment amen everything he did was to get you close to him and then you said I do and he said I knew you would amen it's a setup all the way around you did not choose him he chose us we are his own before the planets found their place he chose you as his own he picked you out he had a thought of you and figured out a way to get you here and to give you a purpose. And there's a price for that, my friend. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, And you are not your own, but you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. He loves his own. He, one of my favorite little stories is about a little boy that made a little, little boat. And he put a little sail on it. And he set it out during the time of the Depression. And he's, he built that little boat, and he hollowed it out, and he put little stick men in there. And as he set it up, he, he went out during a rainstorm, and he set it down in a little, a little ditch. And when he did, the water picked up, and he followed that little boat. And all of a sudden, the boat got away from him, and he was running through the woods. He can't get to his boat, and the boat disappeared. Weeping and crying, he goes home. A couple of weeks later, he's walking in town. He walks by a little pawn shop, and there in the window is his boat. He looks at that boat, and he knows it's his boat. He carved his initials under the bottom of it. So he walks in there, and he tells the man, Sir, that's my boat. And the man said, No, sir, that's my boat. I bought that little boat. You can buy that boat back. He said, No, sir, flip it over. Those are my initials. I carved my name in that boat. That's my initials right there in that boat. J.C. He said, No, 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 no. He said, that, That's my boat. He said, You want that boat? It's going to cost you. So the boy who goes home, he takes his piggy bank, he breaks it, he counts out all of his change, and he realizes to the penny he got enough money for the boat. He goes back in then to the pawn shop. He hands all the money he's got to that man and to the, to the seller, and he takes that little boat, and he walks outside the store, and he looks at that little boat, and he holds it up toward heaven with a smile on his face. He said, I made you, and I bought you. Now you twice mine. He made you, and he bought you. You twice his now. Amen? Come on, give God praise in here. You know he did. Everybody say, I'm his. Come on, say, I'm his. Amen. He loves you like that. You may see his own in a fishing boat casting the net. His own may be collecting taxes. His own may be among the poor. His own may sit behind a desk. Amen. Uh, that there are those that have been forgotten. There are his own forgotten, but they are still his own. Rejected, but they're still his own. R ridiculed, but still his own. I told you in the beginning, love is a verb. He rose from supper. He laid aside his garments. He took a towel and girded himself. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the disciples. Love reveals itself through demonstration. You can't tell somebody you love them and don't show it. There has to be a demonstration of that. When I go to buy or purchase something of value, I want to demo it. I want to drive that. Before I ever buy a Hellcat, Somebody said, Pastor, got a rebel truck and a Hellcat car. I ain't got it yet. But if I ever do, if I ever do, Cheryl, I'm going to demo that thing first. I'm going to see what that black key do, and I'm going to see what that red key do. Amen. And if I like what it do, y'all just be with me. Pray for the preacher. Hallelujah. Because I'm just telling you right now, I'm going to demo it first. You got to do that with some. In the same way with us, he de we demo. He demos. His love to us. He took the towel. He stood. Amen. He stood. He stooped. He stripped. And he served. He rose through the idea of collecting one's faculties to rouse from inactivity, obscurity. He stepped out of the vagueness of their mind to the forefront of their heart. He stooped. He humbled himself. It's a, it's a word picture here of a helper, unselfish and thoughtful. He stripped. He uncovered. Amen. Only those you love. Hear me? Only those you love or love you can you reveal yourself to. Don't tell everybody your stuff. Put, quit putting everything on social media. It's none of their business. 
They don't know you. Amen. But if you keep doing that, they're going to find out who you are. Just, but it, it, when you love somebody, so he reveals himself, and then he begins to serve them. Now, he did this before the Passover. You know why? You can't take Passover smelling stinky feet. Somebody needs a foot washing. And he kneels, and he begins to wash their feet. Now, I'm, I'm just going to iterate what just happened here. They're laying head to foot, head to foot, head to foot, head to foot. They're not sitting at a table. This is how their custom was, head to foot, head to foot, head to foot. So your f- head, your nostril is near somebody's toes. So they got that toe jam in between their feet, and you could smell it, and they're walking around in sandals all the time. And Jesus realizing the first thing I got to do here is cleanse the air to be able to take communion together. So he, ro- he rose up. God, and let me tell you, there's nothing more powerful than your serving to demonstrate your love. You say, well, I ain't serving. I don't like them. If, you will, if the Bible says to love your enemies, how much more should we love our brothers and sisters? We treat our brothers and sisters worse than sometimes our own enemies. We can talk to our enemies because we don't know them, but we know our brothers and sisters, and we start treating them wrong. He said, wash your feet. Do something for them. Now, I believe in 21st century, foot washing is washing somebody's vehicle, babysitting their kids, amen, doing something for them, going in washing their dishes, unannounced mowing their grass. You know, these are things that we do to, to do for somebody. You just do it. You just step right out and do it. Some of you say, well, my neighbors don't like me. Why should they like you? All you've done is complain about their cat. Or dog or whatever, yeah. So, so what you have to do is do something for them. Be kind toward them. And I'm telling you, things will start turning around. He loved them unto the end. Amen. When he served, when serving is your ability to create unity. is directly related to your ability to be a servant. It changes the atmosphere. When, when an atmosphere is smelly and stinky and bad, you come in and you start serving. You just go grab a vacuum cleaner and you start vacuuming. Patsy runs to you and says, hey, that's my job. And you say, I know. I just want to help you out today. I ain't got nothing to do this evening. I'm waiting on the NCAA basketball. I thought I'd vacuum the floor for you, Patsy. He may help you out. I go, where's the toilet bowl cleaner? I go back there and deal with that too. You know, when you start serving one another, it changes the atmosphere like that. You don't have to say a word. All you've got to do is rise, love them enough to be vulnerable, grab a towel, a basin. He washed his feet. And as he washed him feet, Kenny, he got around to, I'll leave you alone. He got around to, to Peter's feet, and Peter yanks his feet back and said, you can't wash my feet. You can't do that. And Jesus said, unless I wash your feet, you don't have a part with me. And Peter said, well, wash my head, wash my hands. In other words, more than anything else, Lord, I want to have a part with you. I've, I've, I've invested. Understand something about investment. When you invest something, you want a return for it. I've invested three years of my life with you, Jesus. I've slept out in the cold with you. I've walked through water with you. Amen. I've been in the storms with you. I've seen you raise the dead. Don't tell me you're not going. I can't have a part now. Wash my head. Wash my hands. Whatever it takes. Jesus said, no, only that which is unclean needs to be washed. That which comes in contact with the world, which right now is our mind. It's our mind. The Scripture says, by the washing of the water, the Word, the Word washes your brain. Amen. Some of you get, you got to open your Bibles and let it wash your brain some. Because we get so bombarded by worldly things over and over through what we see, what we hear. So God, help wash my mind. Cleanse me up. That's, what, that's, a, that's, that's the best foot washing. Washes his feet. And then at this moment, and then I can't go much further. He looks at Judas and says, go do what you came to do. Probably the saddest place in the Bible says it was night. And it was never day again. Keep, keep rolling, sis. Let me close up here with this. He loved them in a way which went to the ultimate limit. Man can love you until you disappoint him. God will love you until the end. Amen. He has a death. He said, I, I got you. I'm going to take you all the way to the end. Keep going, sis. Amen. Who shall separate us? Who? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, Famine, nakedness, peril, sword, festivities, my time coming to an end. 
What's going to separate us from the love of Christ? As it's written, for your sake we're killed all the day long. We're counted as sheep for the slaughter. No, 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 no. In all these things, we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. That's what he said. Paul's laying it out. That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities. I've been through all of this. And what he said, no powers, nor things to come, nor no, no things present, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. nothing. Hey, everybody say, nothing. Amen. Love is a verb. He said, nothing is going to take us away from him. Hang on to that. My father gave him. I believe God gave all of you to him. I believe all of us who have accepted him. It was a divine setup. Can I get an amen? Stand with me. Hallelujah. Those watching, thank you again for tuning in. Let me say, it doesn't make you any more important than anybody sitting here. I'd rather have you in this pew than watching on TV or your phone or anywhere else. Not to be mean to you. You can send me a message if you need to. I'm just saying I, lo I love this house. Love is a verb. As we move through the next few weeks, I want you to notice that. It ain't what we say. It's what we do. And in that era of social media, we are word crazy. We are the memes crazy. You know what I'm talking about, the memes? No, 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 no. no the me, M-E, M-E. Me, yeah. The memes. We just throwing them out there, throwing them out there, throwing them out. And we don't even we, we forget what it says. We word crazy. You know, I know who loves me. They show it. You know, I love you. I show it. We show that to one another. Amen. As we move through the next few weeks, may we demonstrate the love of Jesus for people. I pulled up on a little car show the other night, and I felt the wall come up immediately. A bunch of old codgers out there. I was in my purple car. I looked at theirs. I don't know if it was jealousy or what. <laughs> but I got out of my car, and I walked right over there, and I gave them some paperwork to tell them about the car show. And I just, here's the one thing I did. Instead of talking, I listened. I listened to them tell me about their cars. Just listen. And all of a sudden, the walls start coming down. In other words, it wasn't about me and mine, what we were doing. I want to know about your situation right now. A year ago, I gave a trophy to a man I met at a car show. He had a beautiful blue and white 55 Chevy. Gorgeous car. Some of you might remember. He died a couple of months after that. But he had the memory of knowing that a church looked at his Chevrolet and thought it was worth giving a trophy to. Amen. And it was. It was. But I honored that man and prayed for him. My heart goes out as we move toward this. We're going to have opportunity to serve. Heads bowed, eyes closed for a moment. Jesus, be Jesus in us today. Touch us in such a way. Lord, without the lifting of hands this morning, I pray over this house that we demonstrate the love of Jesus to a world whose eyes, not to be mean, but are blind to our Christ. They, they've seen too many bad witnesses. Let us be good witnesses. Let us be the people that break through. Let them see you in us as we stand, as we stoop, as we bear all, as we serve. Use this house as your legs, your hands, and an oracle of your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you receive that, give God a praise in here. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I, I appreciate you standing. Now you can be seated for a moment as your servant leaders come up. I was throwing a kid off the tower yesterday. I was helping assisting a young man off the tower. He looked at me and he said, Pastor, I'm scared. I'm scared. I said, okay. But by then, I got him hooked up. You know what's going to happen. He said, I'm scared. He said, would you pray for me? I'm talking about a young Mormon boy. 
He said, will you pray for me? I said, oh, 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 that's all I need is to hear that. I prayed over him in Jesus' name and shoved him off that tower with great confidence that if anything happened, he was going to heaven. Amen? That's how you got to live. Guys, I, I got to pull on you because you, you're going to wait too late if you're not careful. In the back is a table you need to stop and look at. You say, well, I've already signed up for one. Is it something you signed up for that you can sign up for something else? In other words, we have found it takes four or 500 people to do what we're fixing to do. It takes a lot of people to drive in tractors and, and help and pick up people. We're going to need, uh, if you have access to hay bales, we're going to need some hay out there. I need to know who's going to be bringing that for us, some squares. Um, there's, there's sign-ups for, for, for food. I, I need you to bring drinks Tuesday and Sunday so our kids, our, t our little kids, they're, they're selling drinks this year. The two things, was, three things we're selling. We're not, we're not trying to make profit. Your T-shirt, of course, we always do that. The second thing is the, uh, the drinks. And then we had somebody said, Pastor, we got, it's a, it's a popcorn. What kind of corn is it? Kettle corn. And they said, Pastor, if we, if, we, if we supply kettle corn, can we use that for the children? I said, man, yeah. People like us sold in some kettle corn before we give them free barbecue. Amen. So, again, I need you to look at that paper back there. Pick up on what you're going to do. First off, I need you to give this morning. Amen. If you need to tie the offering envelope, lift your hand. Everybody honor God. Now, if you're using your phone, hold them. Show them your phone. Show them your phone. Don't let these servant leaders walk by and think you're not a giver. Show them your phone. I'm giving on my phone, Pastor. Amen. I'm, on, I'm like them online people. I'm giving on my phone. And then when that bucket comes by, I want you to take your phone and tap the bucket with it. Amen. And you said, now, what did that do, Pastor? Well, I'm hoping it's going to add more. Amen. It's just it's going to make your phone do a little bit more than what it did. Amen. Hallelujah. Tuesday night, to be here Tuesday night, come in. You want to be a part of what we're doing here on Tuesdays? Uh, I mean, we, we're staying on this life of Christ, his hour, this time. You know, you've got, you've got the guest chamber. You've got this place here where Christ is at... Uh, at the festival, then we got him in going into the courts. We're going to have him in the garden. We're going to have him at Golgotha. We're going to have him at the grave. It's a lot of stuff going on over the next few weeks. So stay with us. Good to have all of you here, sir. Thanks for visiting with us, our one and only visitor. You mean a lot to us today. Amen. Amen. Come on, David. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys, we're believing God today for... Jobs are better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the kingdom. Yes, Lord. So we got, normally Josiah will pray, but he's going to have to wait for a minute. We got your six Dang. this week. See, see Mike Barrett um, at the North Campus, uh, April 5th through the 7th. That's this weekend. See Miss Diane. They're going to be out at the camp. And then on Saturday, you guys are doing zip line. So uh, if you guys want to come help out with that, or if you want to be a part of that, go talk to Miss Diane. Um, April si uh, 21st, Kids Egg Hunt, Bring Candy by the 17th, Give to Sheila Ibram. Um, and, and you can either give her money or you can give her candy. They ask that it not be chocolate and that it be individually wrapped. Um, huh? If it's chocolate, it goes to the van. Yeah, well, it's going to go somewhere. So. We've been um, saying that for three weeks now, man. April 25th through the 27th, Zion's Lions, they're going to be taking a ride to the Hill Country, see J. Bo Johnson. Uh, Muscle Car Sunday is April 14th. Donate sodas or money in the back. She said she will take money. But you're going to put more on Randa's plate. Uh, if you could just bring the sodas, that's even better. Randa, where would you like them to put them? <laughs> Fine, Randa. You got some sodas in your car? Fine, Randa. Um, donate money for barbecue. That should be in a bag um, in a crock pot. Um, and her favorite desserts. <laughs> you have a chance to win. And bake cookies, brownies, cupcakes for guests. And again, that's just to go along with the barbecue. That's separate. It's not the same thing. If you want to enter the contest, that's one thing. If you want to bring for the guests, that's another thing. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of people there. They're going to need a lot of cookies. Going to need a lot of cupcakes. Amen? So bring some. Doesn't matter if they Pillsbury, if they homemade. Look, as far as it was made at home, 
It's homemade, amen? <laughs> That's what I tell my wife all the time. I don't care if it's stole a house. I made it at my house. Homemade, amen? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Josiah. It's all, all you, right. bro. All right, man. Mm -hmm. 